Hello everyone, welcome to round one with our bomb-filled deck. Um, I'm keeping this hand. It's got both these slivers, so I basically have a pair of 1-1 hard-to-target death touch creatures. Um, and it's got removal in the form of turn to frog, so... Basically it should be able to hold down the fort while we work on advancing our board state. And there's a soul chandelier for eventuality. Death Touch Lover. Blue. Bronze Sable. Maybe our opponent's on a uh, effect. Dot deck. Diffusion Sliver, which also happens to have Death Touch. Not attacking into a Bronze Sable. And that's a research assistant. Okay. If he wants to attack, I'll probably just take the two. I don't know yet. I haven't quite thought that through. Um, so we want to hit a mana for Shaman of the Spring here. That's not a mana. Alright, well that's unfortunate. Looks like we're going to be sitting around for a bit. As soon as we hit another mana though, we are we're getting Shaman of the Spring and then we could potentially even just get like Master of Predicaments into Soul Hill or something nutty like that. Oh. Well okay, our opponent has a plane Hmm. Okay. That's interesting. If he tries to go for the ultimate on that, I'm just gonna void snare it and make him go back. So he's blue black, by the way. Interesting to note. Let's run out this Shaman of the Spring. Okay, we gotta land up for next turn. Um, I could swing at the Jace, trade out both my guys for both his guys, I suppose. I'm not too worried about it right at this moment. I do have turn I do have Void Snare to bounce it when it gets to eight is its ultimate, right? Yeah, eight's ultimate. So I have a Void Snare to bounce it. So it looks like he might be mono blue. I always find it interesting when my opponents are able to draft mono colored decks in this format. Alright, well, I have hit basically mono colored, or, well, two of my colors. I haven't hit a way to hit my Soul of Chandelier yet, but whatever. The funny part is, if I choose low drop and he names high drop, I can get a pretty powerful high drop. Um, just because I can, I'm going to send both of those at Jace. I could choose this, and if he names low drop, because that's what I'm probably more likely to have, I would guess. Then I just suddenly drop Soul of Chandelier and he's like, oh, oh my. <laughs> I could also see him potentially just using Jace and bouncing my master too. I don't know. All options. Um, if he does that, I'll play the master again. This is the interesting question. What do you do when your opponent ta attacks your planeswalker with two 1 1 death touch guys? The answer, apparently, is you trade out your creatures for them. Okay. You want to trade out your stuff that's better than mine? Cool. I'm fine with that. Maybe he goes and bounces my master predicaments, pluses... His, so he, like, pluses his Jace, tries to bounce my master predicaments so I can't get through, and then I... Void snare is Jace. So basically reset him to where he was. I don't know. We'll see. Fester Gloom. That's interesting. Ah, he's finally hit a black mana. 
Oh, that's fairly big. Guess the real question is, is that chumping my master? Um, I'm gonna attack the Jace. Which will probably trigger this being chumped. Which point then I'm like, okay, you lost that. I will play Void Snare and Bouncer Jace. <laughs> I'll play Wall of Frost. So now my opponent can play Jace. Or he can encrust my guy, which is unfortunate. Now he can replay his Jace and be just fine with it. Um, hmm. Encrust is annoying. Be nice to hit a way to produce some red mana at some point. Hmm. Interesting. Oh, that'll work. I got a planeswalker too. Yay! Hi Jace, how's it going? And I win. Alright! Awesome. It's like, you're a planeswalker, I have a And he didn't see any of my red cards, which is fine by me. Um, I didn't see any of my red mana. But I do have the two Verdant Havens and the Nessus Expedition, so I'm probably... Red is... Technically my splash color, so yeah. Oh, now I'm gonna see red my red mana. Now I just hit, need to hit a green. I'm in good shape. I'm gonna keep this. I'm on the draw. Uh, I have Verdant Haven, so at some point, and I got Rabble Master now too, so that's a good thing to get into here. Sure, he's got a research assistant. Fortunately, that eats my goblins from my rabble master, but... Huh. Perfect. Well, I think what we're going to do is next turn Mountain Verdant Haven. And then shortly thereafter reveal just how broken our deck is. Because I just need to draw one more land to be able to play this guy after this. At some point here. Um, I'm going to put it on my red mana. So next turn I can go Rabble Master or Netcaster Spider. I don't really care which. Um, if I play Rabble Master, all his little goblins will just keep dying for now, so it's probably the Netcaster Spider first. Well, he is tapped out, so maybe it's the Rabble Master. Netcaster Spider blocks all his attacks from here on out. Undo. Undo that. Tap that. That. Rabble Master! You haven't seen the half of it yet, buddy, if you're thinking I have a good card. Uh, yeah, we'll yield to that. So next turn, Soul of Chandelar. <laughs> and my opponent might just scoop again after that. Who knows? We'll see. This deck is just so laden with bombs, it's just not... It's ridiculous. Alright, so my opponent used another divination. He's trying to play a, good, a controlling game, but he's not going to get super far, I don't think. We'll see. Guess he can attack with his toad this turn if he wants. No? Alright. Well, while you're tapped out here, thank you for doing that, by the way, I'll reveal my next bomb. For my next trick, I have a Soul of Shandalar! 
Oh yeah, and those goblins are just very dead. My opponent's probably just like, oh, gosh, that thing? He might just have flushed us for it, at which point, whatever, I just remove it, blow up one of his big, one of his guys. If he doesn't, that thing is just ridiculous, and my opponent's in a lot of trouble. He has to have an answer for it. Okay, so I just don't attack with it. That's fine. Doesn't need to attack. You are aware my guy has first strike. Necrobite will trigger the regen, remove your guy from combat if you use it. Okay. If he blocks each, I can Polymorphous Jest. If he double blocks, Polymorphous Jest doesn't do much. So... Alright. Oh, His abilities can't be activated. Huh. Nice. Alright, well, then in this case we'll do this. Well, that's variable one. <laughs> Kill the other. And basically put my opponent completely still on the black back foot. I guess I have a one time swing with a 6 6 first striker. That's, that's all. Merc Lurker? Hmm. That thing's strong, but loses to Polymorphous Jest, which he'll see in a moment. So he probably like blocks the token, gives himself life link. I go polymorphous just make it lose abilities. Yep. So I let the life link ability resolve, then I make it lose all abilities. The life link resolves, and then polymorphous just. It's a one one without abilities. Because I am full of bomb cards. Seriously, man. I have a bomb e deck. Serious bomb power. <laughs> my deck is insane. As my opponent is quickly figuring out. I feel bad for him, actually. I really do. Cause like next turn I can do li if he plays something big enough to block the goblins, I can just convoke in living totem. Otherwise, I just keep swinging for a bunch. Unfortunately, my solo chandelier is kind of like, eh. All right, I'm gonna take a nap. I'll be on the defense. Let me know when you need me. Or I guess he can also s let's see one two three four five six seven eight nine. Hmm. If he doesn't. Hmm, interesting. Wonder what he could he's gonna have to have something. Sure. Paragon's fine, but I don't think it does enough for my opponent. If I happen to have a way to disrupt the paragon via like void if I draw a void snare or something like that, I can actually actually I probably at that point just void snare the encrust and blast the paragon and kill him. But um, that's a neither here nor there moment. He's definitely on the serious defensive, so. Alright, island, that's fine. Um, gonna play Living Totem here. Make this into a 3-3. Three, three.
so that way this doesn't get killed by that. My opponent is taking a moment. Put the token over there. Or counter. Put the counter over there. Give that thing the extra toughness it needs to beat your paragon, and voila. Round one. Done very quickly. Or fairly quickly, at least. Um, two very fairly quick games. Anyways, I guess I will see you all in round two.